Kia ora koutou katoa, called Georgia Toko Ingoa. Um, kia ora, so my name is Georgia McCove and I'm the project leader for East Coast Lab. Um, East Coast Lab is a branded hazard project. So this is something that we have several of across the country um, and we're pretty well connected through something called the Plate Boundary Network. But essentially what it is, is an organisation that's focused on one specific hazard and on bringing together several elements. So for us, we bring together scientists and, research and uh, the research that they do with the sector. So um, with civil defence, with emergency uh, services, and then with the community as well. So predominantly, we're about public education. But we don't just want to go out and do the same sort of uh, talking about long, strong, get gone, because that gets, that gets old pretty fast. So what I'm going to delve into is a little bit about what we've done in the past and sort of what um, our mission is. Uh, so East Coast Lab is a community-focused project uh, that seeks to grow and share Hikarangi subduction zone knowledge about earthquakes and tsunamis and to work alongside the community to build their resilience, as well as with scientists and with emergency managers. So we talked a lot about Japan today, and Japan is a really good model uh, for building resilience to a subduction zone because that was a subduction zone event just like our own. Um, and Japan has a fantastic culture of resilience. And there are a few things that we can take from that and learn from for our communities. But we have to think about how we adapt them. So one key thing is that Japan has a lived experience of tsunamis. And so that's why they have this really strong culture of, res uh, culture of resilience. Grandparents have told their grandchildren about what the experience was like. There's even uh, tsunami stones, which are literally these big pillars in some communities, with engraved, these 10 foot tall pillars, with engraved on them, uh, sort of almost like poems about tsunamis, but even things quite as literal as don't build buildings below this line, remember the calamity of great tsunamis. These are something that have really built into the landscape. We don't have a strong lived history with subduction zone earthquakes here in New Zealand, so then how do we build a culture of resilience? Uh, and how East Coast Lab uh, aims to do it is through science. So as much as we want people to know that the Earth revolves around the sun, we want them to know that if there is a long or strong earthquake, they can expect a tsunami. We want them to be aware that we have a subduction zone just off of our coast. So East Coast Lab is funded. Uh, we get a small amount from, from the Hawke's Bay Sedum Group, which is where I'm based. Um, but actually, I'm not, I, as much as I have a response role with them, I, I'm not, um, I don't work for the Hawke's Bay Sedum Group in the sense that they're the only people I serve. I actually serve all the Sedum Groups and really the entire community from Bay of Plenty down to Wellington. So I'm available to all of you. Um, and essentially, I want to take the research that's done, and that's where all of our funding comes from, is being contracted onto research projects to do community engagement. And we want to start um, with things like public talks, um, with articles about the most recent research, and with other ways of engaging the community. We want to build the story with science so that people are constantly hearing about it. It's just something that they're aware of, and it becomes a little bit more of our cultural understanding. We then want to get alongside communities and try to build their resilience in different ways. So one is by talking to people with public talks, with uh, school road shows, which is something that we do up the coast here as well. Um, but then we need to think of other things as well. We can't just tell people. We have to work with them. So who here has heard of Tsunami Hikoi? OK, sweet. So East Coast Lab actually started Tsunami Hikoi, but it's something that has been attached onto ShakeOut as well. So Tsunami Hikoi is a walk from, your, from wherever you are, either if you're at work, at home, at school, uh, to your tsunami safe location. And that's about building that muscle memory and that um, constantly bringing back that awareness um, that tsunamis are possible and that you need to move as fast as you can and know where you're going to go. We also want to think about moving on foot. So again, it's reinforcing that idea you could get stuck in traffic, the roads could be impassable, and we want to leave the roads open for people with disabilities, for the fire service to move their appliances, that sort of thing. We actually do Tsunami Hikoi on two occasions, though. Shakeout is one of them. And then we also run it every year around the anniversary of the Tohoku Tsunami because it's a really strong thing to pull people back to and remind them to look, look to events uh, overseas. And again, we're building that cultural understanding a little bit. There's been other projects as well. So most recently, um, one thing that was actually NEMA Resilience funded was the Tsunami Po project. So this was done with uh, a school in Wainui here and another in Waimarama in Hawke's Bay. And this was sort of similar to those tsunami stones I mentioned. Uh, we worked with schools to get them designed. The kids actually designed these uh, po, these big poles, and they designed the art that would go on them and then installed them at their tsunami safe location. So now their entire community and their school see that as they go past. They know that's their safe zone. They're reminded that there is something they can do in a, in a large tsunami, and they're reminded of exactly where to go. 
And the other thing is that's so important, and we talked about reaching our young people, reaching our children, is that they're going to be there for, for decades longer. And they're actually the ones who are caring for that environment. The kids are the ones who are maintaining the path and maintaining the area around that. So they have a real sense of ownership. And that's going to carry with them throughout their life, and they can then tell their older generations and support their community for the next several decades to have that, to really remember that um, important message. And I think that important message is not just that we have tsunamis, but there, that there is something we can do about it. Uh, we recently, as part of uh, the wrap-up of a really big GNS subduction zone project, put out some documentaries. Um, one was sort of a minute and a half and very specific to Tairawhiti, uh, and then we had one for Hawke's Bay and one for Wellington. But one of the first comments we got was, well, I'm going to die, so pff, nothing I can do about it doesn't matter. And that kind of fatalism stops people taking action, and it's hugely disempowering, and it's not helpful to anyone. And so instead, we want to give them things that we, we can show people, actually, there is something you can do and make them feel empowered. So something that we've done in the... Um, risk reduction space with our colleagues in the emergency management is the Hikarangi Response Planning Toolbox was created by East Coast Lab. Who's seen the Response Planning Toolbox? Okay, awesome. So that was something that was put out a couple of years ago, and it's really good for our emergency management sector. It's not so good for our communities. It's the kind of thing, that sort of information is not useful to them because it's not empowering and it doesn't give them uh, things that they can do. However, it is important for our sector, at least we hope so. So the toolbox came out a couple of years ago, but the next step from the toolbox hasn't been as clear, and how we do it and how it continues to support people is sometimes not always as clear. So it's really important to us, if you've read it recently, if you've looked over it while you were doing some of this planning, um, please let us know, please get in touch, because we want to make sure it's useful, usable and used, which is a new phrase I learned from a colleague recently and I love. Um, we want to make sure that we can review it and keep making sure that we're putting things out, we're connecting in our science colleagues, we're hearing from the community, and we're turning it into something that you can use and it's valuable to you. Um, yeah, so please do get in touch with your feedback. If you said, oh, it was just too big, I need a too long, didn't read section, and then I'd actually do something with it. Please tell us that, that's super important. Um, yeah, I'm, I've sort of just wanted to go through a few things about, about who we are, but really, um, we have a really strong base of the latest science, of community connections and ways to engage our community. And um, I tend to get, to get um, contracted onto a lot of subduction zone stuff, so we're involved in the latest science all the time. So please, if you're thinking, how am I going to engage my community? How, when I make a plan, am I going to connect them in and not just scare people, but involve them in the process? Reach out to East Coast Lab. We're constantly doing things like social media campaigns, um, like public talks or different um, public education initiatives like that. Um, I'm here for your, for, to support you and I'm here to get alongside you and make sure that we're serving you the best that we can. Um, so I'm, yeah, as I say, keen to hear your feedback about the, about the toolbox, about what would be of value from you, and um, as well if you want to work with scientists, uh, often if you get in touch I can put you, um, put you in the direction of the right people to talk to as well. Um, yeah, and just one more thing, uh, there's been some really great science that's been done, uh, that you've heard about, sorry, um, over the last couple of days. And as well, just um, earlier this year, Kate Clark and I organised the Tsunami Short Course, uh, which was a seven weeks of two-hour seminars um, each week, uh, going into some of that science really, really in depth. I know that we did have a lot of our colleagues from St John and Fiennes and all that sort of thing there as well as CDEM, but if you didn't have access to that, please let me know, um, and I can give you access to that if you want a little bit more of that in-depth knowledge as well. Um, that's all from me. Thank you.